<laughs> Greetings, everybody. It's David Pulse again from PelicanPreps.com. I hope you enjoyed the football roundtable. Now we have arguably the four greatest volleyball coaches in the history of the state. I'm going to ask them to wave so you know who they are. Terry Abair from Turlings Catholic. April Hagedon, I think I got it right this time, from Mount Carmel. Julie Ibietta from Metairie Park Country Day. And Danny Tullis from Pope John Paul. My first question, and I'd love to get everybody's answer on this. You're a sport that hasn't been affected yet by COVID-19 because your seasons were canceled. But there's always the worry of we don't know what's coming still. We'll start with Coach Abair because he's at the top of the screen. Coach, what have been some of the discussions you've had with your team as we get closer to, you know, summer volleyball and then the, before we know it, fall camp will be here? Uh, to tell you the truth, man, we, we haven't really – I haven't really been in contact with them. You know, we have a what we call a competition Friday. I set up a an app that uh, with Adidas that you know I give them a workout and we kind of communicate via that. But it's kind of only on Fridays. Um, we haven't, like I said earlier, you know, when 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 I got on here, I don't really know what to tell them, you know, because I, I don't know where this is going. And so we really haven't communicated that much. Um, we've been using this time to you know maybe kind of let them take a step away from it because I know. Um, we the lifestyle we live, especially during the spring, is, is is quite hectic, and so I know a lot of people are getting a lot of family time. So uh, you know, we haven't really discussed much. Coach Hagan. Um. Well, I had a Zoom meeting with my former team from this past year just to see how everyone was doing. But the only thing that I've done is reached out to my underclassmen and any of my JV and eighth grade teams that are that are possibly returning and. He basically said that tryouts are an unknown at this moment, and we don't know when and we don't know where. And um, I just have some workouts to do, and and hopefully, you know, we'll know soon. Coach Tullis, how about you? Uh, most of my kids are involved in the club, and we've been doing an Adidas Run Tastic chat with the club. So there's been contact with all of them that way. And of course, my daughter's one of the team, so they know all the kids. And all the kids, but I haven't given them any specific uh, hope instruction, you know, as to this is what we want to do or this is what we're going to try out. We're trying to figure out a way for, like, my oldest daughter's graduating, so we're trying to figure out a way to do graduation during the summer right now. So really just telling them to stay healthy and pay attention to the social distancing because that seems to be lost on a few people. And uh, so we've just been talking about that and the safety of right, Wrap it up here with Coach Avietta. We, I really haven't addressed it. Um, you know, we're a small school where it, we only have 25 girls in each class. So right now they're still grieving their spring sports season. So they really, we haven't moved on to, to volleyball for the fall. We're just trying to function through the end of the school year, those sorts of things. So I've been in touch with them through like a group meet. Um, you know, we're in constant contact, but it's mostly just very light and keeping people in a good headspace and just trying to stay productive and and I think most of them are just struggling with a little bit of some sort of depression of what they've lost and not really thinking ahead months ahead um so we really haven't addressed next fall at all coach Hagedon I'd love to get your opinion on this when I talked to the football coaches they spoke a lot about how important the summer is in terms of conditioning and we can't just oh shut down the summer and then come back in August and be ready to go how how much time does your volleyball prep team need if this thing still drags out you know how much time do you need uh with your team to feel like we will be our best for the safety of the girls and just in your best condition headed into the fall well you know um in most cases for me like a lot of the kids would play year round so we would start probably a lot later than most than most uh high schools and stuff like that. So my plan is to basically start, I guess, you know, uh, you know, with some team camps, just like everybody else would do. And then we have, we usually do a week, a week, a week of conditioning. Um, but I do send them exercises and stuff. And I tell them when they return, they're not getting in shape for conditioning. They're supposed to be showing me that they're already in shape and they've been doing the things that they needed to do on their own. So it is important. 
Uh-oh. And that's why I sent them out workouts um, last week so that they could do on their own. Um, and, you know, just stay healthy and stay safe and keep training. That's all, that's all we can do right now. Coach Tellis, we all know about your exploits with, Co- with Club Wobble Dob. How, I mean, what is the status of summer volleyball in the AAU scene? And I mean, are they playing right now, or is it everything is still frozen? Everything is frozen. Um, USAV and AAU both um, wanted everyone to shut down, and they're not covering anything. If you were doing something, they're not covering it by the insurance. So it's kind of in limbo. And I guess one way to describe it would be kind of holding on by a thread. Everyone's holding out hope that maybe you can come back in May or June, something like nationals. But it's it's not. I wouldn't say it's likely, but everyone's just kind of, I think, just hoping that they can get back and just do something at the very end. You know, Coach A Bear, how much for your team if they don't get to play in the summer? How much does that affect your team? Just not being able to hit. It's like a pitcher that doesn't get innings. You know, how much does that affect your team in a negative way if the girls aren't allowed to play during the summer? Well, I've said this all along. You know, I'm very blessed to have the 90% of my program, my girls are playing clubs. So, you know, they're, they finish, as April said, they finish in June. And so, you know, I don't wave a magic wand over them in August and say, okay, let's go. I mean, the time and, and effort and money that they're putting in in the spring um, – you know, that's a direct result of why we're able to do what we've been able to do, um, you know, at the last few years is because they're getting so many good refs by so many good coaches um, at, at a high level, you know, nationally. And uh, we're able to reap those benefits when they come back. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what it's like, uh, you know, to have to kind of ease them back in the pool physically, you know. Strength and conditioning is always good, but, you know, there's not, there's nothing – you, know, you can't replace those extra reps, those high-quality reps. Coach Abietta, how worried would you be about your team if they could not have any summer experience? Or is that – that's what fall camp is for? Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm like everybody else. The majority of my players play club, and, and that's a valuable experience to get them progressing through all the skills and game experience. But I think we'll all be in the same boat. Um, you know, and our goal every year is our high school team does not get together until that pretty much the middle of July. So we do not gather them all summer anyway. Um, and our goal is to kind of them play themselves into volleyball shape, come in in good shape physically, but play yourself into volleyball shape by the middle of October. So while it will be a little different, I think we'll, we'll be a little behind on everything. Um, everybody's going to be the same. So it's not like my group is dealing with anything that, you know, the rest are not, you know, we're just hoping that we get to play in the fall and we get to start in July and, and all of those things. Cause everything is just so uncertain. Um, so my opinion is if we get to play, we'll be happy and we'll make the best of it. Coach Haggard on coach. I've had talked about if we get to play, that's a, that's a big if. And when I talked to the football coaches, they all gave it, I, I asked this question and they were, it, kind of disappointed. They, they just don't know what's going to happen. I'm, I want to get everybody's opinion on this. We can't predict what's going to happen, but do you foresee a possibility that we could be going to volleyball games and there could be volleyball matches in empty stands this year? I think the, the array of options are, you know, there are, hundred of them who knows what we're going to be like I think we could play volleyball without people in the stands I think we may not play volleyball the fall sports may not happen I mean you know in the city of New Orleans they are canceling major events in the fall for various reasons already so you know it's it's, (coughs) we're hopeful but who knows I'd like to get everybody's opinion on the no fans thing I want to touch base on what Julie said a minute ago like the idea of everything being in, in state, like we all feel pretty well that like we're dealing with the same thing as each of the other coaches. So no one in the state is really going to get a jump. I had, was talking to a parent the other day and they mentioned, because some states are in a lot worse situations than others. What if other states all start coming back and then certain states are not allowed to start participating? How might that affect the kids like getting ready to go into college or competing for scholarships. And that was interesting. Um, I thought that was an interesting viewpoint because I hadn't thought about it until that parent 
talked about it because it was a junior's parent. And they're like, well, look, this is, you know, this is the year we were going to be traveling around trying to get recruited. And if for some reason, just like Julie just said, they've already canceled some things in New Orleans for the fall. And, you know, and then other states are starting to open some things back up. So I think that would be the issue where it might be, it might be a, a little bit of an uneven playing field if that were to be the case, if we weren't able to come back as quickly as some other states, you know. Coach Abner, your thoughts on having to possibly play with no fans in the stands? It, you know, it doesn't bother me, man. It, it really doesn't. You know, we, we practice every day without fans in the stands. And so it, it's for the competition and being with kids. And, you know, that's why we do it. Um, it's always fun to have that support and, and whatnot. But um, I would be ecstatic if we were able to play, just play. And if it means no fans, it means no fans. But, man, let us get on the court and go compete and, and get back to normal for us. Coach Hagedon, why don't you wrap it up for us? Yeah, I mean, I agree with everyone. You know, I, you know, I, we can only hope at this point that there is still a season for all for us next year. I know there's been talk about it coming back in September would completely ruin the fall seasons um, for us as well. So I think we're all just praying and we're just hoping that we all still have seasons. And with, with or without fans, I think it would be great just to get a little bit of sense of normal back. Last question, and I, again, I appreciate everybody's time here. I mean, it's 30 state championships between the four of y'all, so it's, you know, it's a Mount Rushmore here. I'd love to know how this is affecting scheduling. Y'all y'all are four of the, the best programs in the state. You also play teams out of state. I know to Coach Tullis has gone to that tournament in Arizona before. Is, are we, is it starting to affect scheduling right now where teams maybe don't want to come to Louisiana or you're not allowed to go to other states or are we not there yet? Let's start with Coach A. Bear. Uh, my, my schedule is pretty much done for the year. Um, we're going to uh, Mobile to play at uh, McGill Tulin, and I haven't heard anything from them. So I, I, you know, I don't know about crossing state lines there, but as far as our, our you know, normal schedule as the year goes, you know, it's pretty much done as, as of right now. Yeah, I'm in the same place as Terry. Like, I, I pretty much have my schedule finished. I think maybe Julie and I might have been looking for a date. I have to go back and look and see. I, Julie, I don't know if you can see it about that. Yeah. That'd be, oh, that'd yeah, be like the only hole I had. But I do have McGill Toolman coming to me, but I haven't heard that they're not coming. So that, that would be a concern if states were like, nope, not going over there. That, that'd be the only thing that one match would be the thing it would affect. Coach Hagedon, how about you? Same boat. We're, we go to McGill Toolin as well, so I'm in the same boat as Terry. My schedule is pretty much done, um, you know, as, as far as we're concerned. We're just hoping that we're, we're able to play it out. So, so Coach Ibietta, are you playing McGill Toolin as well? Uh, I'm not, but I am going to uh, a tournament in Gulf Shores this year. It's a different tournament, but we are going out of state. Um, we have it. No one has tried to alter their schedule at all at this point, I don't think. Um, so it's just a wait and see kind of kind of thing, and you know each each time that the the stay at home extension is you know goes forward, um, you know you just got to wait and see. I really, my opinion is, the fall season will happen in some form or fashion because um, I think you know toward the end of the summer things will start to get a little bit more normal. Now what it looks like, I don't know, but I would be shocked if there's no season at all. Well, awesome. Again, Coach Terry Abair from Charlings Catholic, April Hagedon from Mount Carmel, Julie Ibietta from Metairie Park Country Day, and Danny Tellis from Pope John Paul. Mount Rushmore of Volleyball in the state of Louisiana. We appreciate y'all's time, and thanks for your – and everybody stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.